Hello, my name is Ethan. I'll be presenting my work on novel view synthesis from single images with tiny latent diffusion models. So, what's the problem? Given an input image and some poses, we want to run this through a network and generate new images of the same object but at these new poses. So let's run through the Hellmeyer questions really briefly. What's the problem? You already know. How is it done? Well, there's models like 0, 1, 2, 3, which is essentially stable diffusion, but with poses tacked onto it. Now this is great, but it requires a lot of computational power, which makes it infeasible to train in-house or for a lot of applications. Now what's my approach? I want to shrink everything down, so small data sets, small network, and hopefully small training times. Who cares? Well, this is great if you have very little patience, like me. It's also great for robotics tasks. So here you don't really care about image quality as much as you care about speed and just the geometry being pretty close. What's the midterm exam? Well, I want to build a tiny latent diffusion model. And the final exam was I built a tiny view conditioned latent diffusion model. So let's get some background on these latent diffusion models. So here, here you can see the graphic from the seminal paper. There's three main parts. First, a pixel space variational autoencoder. So the idea here is you go from an input image and encode that into a latent space. And the other side, you go from the latent space and decode it back into the input image. So we use a latent space because it's a lot faster to run diffusion on this, and you can train a model faster and produce better quality outputs. So now we actually get to the denoising step. So this is normally implemented as a big unit. The idea here is you take a random vector, you denoise it a bunch of times, and you get a latent vector that corresponds to an image once it's decoded. Now we also add some sort of conditioning mechanism. So here you can actually guide the diffusion process to generate images according to text prompts, or in our case, a conditioning image and a pose. So now let's take a look at what we actually did. Basically, we made a small version of each of these parts. So here we have a smaller autoencoder. It takes an input image of 32 by 32, which is very small compared to standard stable diffusion type input images. We also have a latent dimension of 1 by 4 by 4, which is also very small. And we use the loss function of KL divergence and L1 loss. So note that we don't actually use a perceptual loss term here. We found that with these super small images, it didn't really matter. We could just run L1 loss and it produced decent, decent results. We found that the number of parameters was about 600,000, which is significantly fewer than in stable diffusion or any of these state-of-the-art latent diffusion models. We found it trained in about an hour on an RTX 4090. So this is a lot faster than state-of-the-art models, and it's really convenient if you're ever trying to learn about this or run it. We also made a small unit following very similar principles. The input is the size of the latent dimension, so 1 by 4 by 4, and the latent dimension of the unit was 64 by 1 by 1. Our loss function was just L1 loss on the predicted noise. We found that this had about a million parameters. In total, this trained in about 20 minutes, which is super fast. And as you know, the number of parameters is significantly smaller than stable diffusion, which has about 860 million parameters. We also made a conditioning mechanism. It's super simple. So we take our conditioning image and run it through our autoencoder to get a 1x4x4 latent. We take our homogeneous transfer matrix and flatten that. Then we just concatenate that with the limited latent and pass it through the transformer blocks. So very straightforward, and it seems to work for our applications. We found it wasn't really necessary to use clip embeddings or spherical coordinates or whatnot. So now let's look at the results. So moving left to right, you can see that we have our input images. Um, and then we try to predict what the input image would look like if you move the camera to a new transform. So you see the predictions are all what our model predicts, and the ground truth is what the actual object is from these positions. Note that when you run these predictions, you only see the original input and the transform, not any other images. You can see that even when you're just, when you're just looking at the bottom of the car, you can still try to predict what the top is. And if you see the side, you can try to predict what the other side of the top or the bottom looks like. And our model was fairly successful on those tasks. Now, our model is not without limitations, like all things in life. You can see here that one of the big limitations is that color is completely ignored. So for whatever reason, our model takes the blue car and produces a gray sedan. We think this might be because the SRN cars dataset has an overrepresentation of silver cars, and we could fix this with maybe a better loss function. We also see that the model ignores big changes in the geometry. So we have this van shaped thing here, and our model predicts a standard sedan. Now, future work. Well, what do you do if you can take an input image and generate all these different output images? Well, you build a nerf, and you build a 3D car. So instead of all these single images, you can have one unified representation, which could be great if you're doing any sort of robotic task where you want to grab or push something. So that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thanks for watching.